Hi, I'm Scott Herring, comedian, yachtsman, and game show regular. And this is Walt Disney World, the place where the impossible becomes possible, dreams come true, and hosts make their own sound effects. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why is this guy sitting on a boat that looks like Mickey Mouse blew a head gasket? The answer, and remember, you must phrase it in the form of a question, is that we're about to embark on an incredible journey into the wacky, whimsical place that is Walt Disney World inside out. We're talking anything and everything you've ever wanted to know about this place. Like, there's lots and lots of water. In fact, there's so much water to play with at Walt Disney World theme parks and resorts, we've decided to devote our extra special June episode to getting wet. From fun-filled fountains to slippery, splashy slides to incredible thrill attractions guaranteed to make you sweat, for example. Ever wanted to lose 200 pounds in six seconds? Well, on the soon-to-open Twilight Zone Tower of Terror, you drop so quickly you're almost totally weightless. It's the ultimate crash diet. Well, maybe crash isn't the best word. What do water, lovely bodies, and day-glow colors, a giant monster, an evil alien, and really big nozzles have in common? We're talking splash-tacular. And if you've ever dreamed of talking to big, wet mammals like I have, you'll want to see how the amazing dolphins at the Living Seas are talking back. That's right, lip from a dolphin. And lots more surprises, including a big celebrity guest. And this brightly colored roving set, complete with subtly logoed sofa, mouse head coffee table, party lamp, and this handy chair. Notice any recurring character theme? Oh, find your favorite sofa, check for a little loose change. Hey, look at that, a sandwich. And take a seat right on the edge, because that's where the view is best for Walt Disney World Inside Out. Disney World, 43 square miles, three theme parks, two water parks, and at two and a half times the size of Manhattan, but with much better parking. Also has great resort hotels like the Yacht and Beach Club with its beautiful white sand beaches. You know, in fact, Walt Disney World has much more than just adventure and fantasy. It's also a great place to get wet, 108 different ways. And that's not even including that frisky little elephant guy on the Jungle Cruise. Why so many? Well, let's just face it, people like to get wet. So with all this great liquid about, where do we go first? How about a big, arid mountain filled with happy-go-lucky guests? Yep, big Thunder Mountain Railroad here in the Magic Kingdom. Now, I know what you're thinking. Is that guy ever going to get off the couch? And more importantly, how does a fast-moving roller coaster tie in with the theme of water? How? These two little cups. And these two people. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm Scott, and I'll be your waiter for this afternoon. I'm gonna hold on to these real quick. How are you guys? Where are you from? What are your names? Fine, I'm Pat. Pat? Jim. And you're from? Holmesdale, New Jersey. All right, now, have you ever been on this ride before? Yes, we have. Okay, how many times approximately? Approximately 200. 200 times. So, a lot of spare time is what we're saying. Okay, good. Yeah. Now, your mission is easy, guys. What you have to do, you're just gonna have a cup of water, Whoever has the most water in the cup at the end of the ride wins a grand prize especially designed for them. Oh, Sounds pretty easy, right? Yes. Yeah. Well, think again. All right. Because you're going to have to hold that cup in your mouth. In fact, why don't you go ahead, put them in there now. I'll load her up here. Just spit and rinse, man. We'll have you done with this filling in just a minute. Hey, you're down a quart. Look at that. So this is all. All right. Let me make sure this, uh, yeah, a little more here, I think. All righty. All right, and make sure you guys don't bend the rules, and I sense you may try to do that. We have a hidden camera directly in front of you, here on the rails, and one behind you, and also a small electrical charge in the seat. All right, so any questions before we go? You sure now? All right, well, hold on to the handrails, start your engines, and remember, drool does not count. Take this one cup at the time. We're going to run these to the lab, get the results on them right away. It's not as easy as it looks. All righty, cups in mouth. There we go. 
right, here we go. Here, hold on. Oh, I'm sorry. Jeez, I'm... That's... <laughs> There we are. All righty, you're all set to go. Zeke, hit it. Thank you. Nice release. Oh, Kim, that's... Uh... Hey, can we get a shot? Just just to let you know, that may be the driest one right there. Apparently, apparently, Kim got a little thirsty on the ride. Mm. Yes. Mm. Interesting. Provocative. Mm. Well, look at we have beakers. We've got boiling colored liquid. I'm wearing a lab coat. No, it's not Doogie Hauser, the mad scientist here. It's the result of our Cup of Fun contest. <laughs> Let's take a look and see how some of the people did. We have Mike Lamo. Not too good. Kim. Kim, uh, Kim's a mummy, apparently. Completely dehydrated. And, uh, you know, I'm looking at all this, folks, and I suddenly realize you're all winners here at Walt Disney World. In fact, because look at it, you, you, you came out, you're soaked. You're all going to get one of these exciting Walt Disney World rain slickers. It's brightly colored, has a famous character on the front. It's, it's a raincoat, basically, is what it is. So you get that. But our big winner with a whopping 70 milliliters or whatever measurement that may be, is Jim, Big Jim, keep it up for, oh, Jim, nice job. Jim, stand up, will ya? Nice job, Jim, how did you do it? I can just hold my water real well. Not only do you win the rain slicker, Jim, but you win this fabulous Mickey Mouse umbrella to keep you dry, and also if you put it in your backyard, it picks up satellite free. But more importantly, Jim, the grand prize, which was specially designed for you, you get to introduce our next segment. Isn't that great? There it is, there's your cue card. Give it a shot. Boy, am I hungry. Where can I eat? <laughs> Boy, I'm glad you asked. Because, Jim, you know, after being on Big Thunder Mountain, that can lead to a mighty hearty appetite, can it? You may be asking yourself now. In fact, I sure you are. You may ask yourself, where can I go for that something special? Well, right now, my good buddy Hulk Hogan is going from bone crushing to bone appetite. Disney World is now home to a new television series, Thunder in Paradise, starring Hulk Hogan and Chris Lemon. The action can be seen popping up throughout the Walt Disney World theme parks and resorts, from the Grand Floridian Hotel to the Morocco Village at Epcot 94. Basically, we have the A-Team and Baywatch and a positive Miami Vice image all rolled into one, and it's a family action hour. And we're going to blow everybody away because this is so cool. That's right, Hulkamaniacs. Thunder in Paradise gives you two chances to see Hulk Hogan on television and in person at the Walt Disney World theme parks and resorts. You may even get that autograph you've been looking for. And, of course, wherever Hulk Hogan goes, a fan is sure to follow. Hey, Hulk, how are you? Hello. I'm a real big fan of yours, man. Well, I'm a big fan of yours, too, Walter. <laughs> so, how's that uh, Thunder in Paradise show going? My gosh, great shooting here at Walt Disney World. What could be better? The show's action-packed. We're having a lot of fun. Getting kind of hungry, though. How about some lunch? Oh, yeah. You know, Epcot's got a lot of restaurants. I like, uh, you know, Italian, French, Japanese. Do you like French, Italian, Japanese? Moroccan. Oh, that Moroccan's good. That's fine. Hey, it's Barbara Eden. There are a lot of great places to eat at Epcot 94. Maybe Hulk was being a little unreasonable, but he's got a mind of his own and much more firepower. And although it was nice of him to give me a lift for lunch, I found that crazy Hulk will wrestle you for just about anything, especially when they come up short on a few menu items. Well, here we are at the very famous restaurant Marrakesh with authentic Moroccan food and belly dancing. I know you're going to love that. Oh, great. You know, my favorite is tangine chicken. Hey, mine too. I'm sorry, you have only one tagine of chicken left. Dibs. Mine. Yours. Wrestle you for it. No, we don't. No! no. Oh. So how was that last tangine of chicken? Great. How's that last bologna sandwich? Oh, <laughs> disarming. Wow, that's pretty impressive. Well, how'd you like to try it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Can be arranged. Ah, this isn't so bad. 
you on switch? No, not really. Where are you going now? Walter, do you know what the most important part about being a star is? Ah, oh, that would be a masseuse. Right, uh, maybe cash right up front? How about an air-conditioned trailer? No, Walter, it's the fans. Mickey's a pretty good guy. I've been talking to him. He's perfecting his drop kick right now. <laughs> As I left Hulk to sign autographs, I couldn't help but wonder one thing. How in Poseidon's name could I tie the thrilling new Twilight Zone Tower of Terror into our theme of water? Well, it may not be wet, but it'll definitely make you sweat. <laughs> Submitted for your approval, the old Hollywood Tower Hotel, abandoned in 1939. It's a place of mystery, a place of hunting illusions, a place of terror. So there it is, the Twilight Zone Tower of Terror. It's not just big, it's immense. We're talking 199 feet tall. That's like 30 and a half Hulk Hogan's, which is like 60 of you and me. It's 1,300 tons of steel, which if you melted it down, would make one gnarly mess. Oh, sure, it looks like nothing but a bunch of girders, scaffolding, and tons of guys taking way too many breaks. But trust me, when this is done, it's going to be the most exciting thrill attraction you've ever been on. And that's not even including the surprise at the end. Let me help you with a little picture here, all right? Now, you're going to enter the Twilight Zone right about there. Start wandering through the hotel, going wee -doo -doo -doo, all around like this. Then you're going to go around either that way or that way and hop on a vehicle. It's going to take you through various corridors. By this time, you're going to learn why on October 31st, 1939, this place was abandoned and no one's been in it since. Then you're going to end up at this mysterious elevator shaft. One is like right there, and there's another one right about there. And by the way, don't call this uh, an elevator. It's called a VVC because it's special. All right, and finally, right about there, that's a palm tree. <laughs> you know, I seem to be sensing a certain lack of excitement on behalf of you people. Okay, so imagine you're riding up 13 stories, 199 feet in a squeaky old elevator. You feel every little movement of this thing rising higher and higher. Then the doors slowly open and hesitating, you open your eyes at this spectacular view. Yep, everything seems fine at this point. Keep it a little calm. And then it happens. It's a 13-story drop, and it's going to feel like you're falling off a really tall mountain. Except, you don't get a parachute. The Twilight Zone Tower of Terror is scheduled to open this summer here at Disney MGM Studios. Yes, there will be a warning label. It's going to be right there. You know the best thing about an interactive fountain? It's the ability to control the flow of water. It's like having the world's biggest squirt gun, and the whole world is your little sister. Ladies, ladies, would you like to come on? We're gonna we're doing a show. Would you like to come over just, just for a second? Come on. You know we're made up of 90% water anyway. So let's see how many people can make it through the fountain without getting wet. You know you guys can call me Cubby. You want to come over? There she comes. All right. What a sport. Oh, you can make it. Come on. Oh, whoa. Oh, man, he almost. Look at that. Oh, yeah. That was some kind of wacky fun, wasn't it? Go, go. Oh, whoa, whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, you ready? On your mark, it's it. Go. Oh, quick, go, quick, go. Oh. <laughs> You know, timing is everything in show business. But what if you're the kind of person that gets a kick out of just watching water? Well, first I'd suggest you get a hobby of some sort. Unless, of course, you're talking about that special fountain at Epcot 94, the one with more power, more colors, evil monsters, and really big nozzles. This is Splashtacular, not only the most incredible new watery show around, it's also the third largest fountain in the world. It's a dazzling, colorful show with Mickey and his future world guard 
fighting to protect all the colors of the rainbow from the forces of evil, including a really mean alien and a huge pyro shooting monster. And it's right here at Epcot 94. And how many people are in the show? In the show, we have over 50 people performing in Splash Tacular. And for them to all get ready for the show, what kind of what kind of rehearsal time were we talking about? Uh, rehearsal time when we mounted the production was a four-week period. Five minutes, please. Five minutes to places. So you guys are Mickey's future world guards here at Epcot 94? Right. right. That's right. Now, uh, was it tough giving up your jobs as hubcaps? Uh, Ken, how many gallons of water involved in the show? Oh, we got over 2,000 gallons of water pumping through the system every hour. Are you truly evil or just misunderstood? This whole area was at one level, so we had to build the stage and build all the support areas and places for our friendly monster to appear from. Dan, did you have to start off playing caterpillars first before you were able to come up to this level? Uh, what about the pumping system? What's interesting with the fountain here at Splash Tacular uh, in the plaza is the uh, fountain itself has four different types of nozzles. Twelve super shooters shoot 60 gallons of water within seconds about 100 feet into the air. The pressure is so great that if you put a steel plate on one of these nozzles, it would launch a human being about 60 to 80 feet into the air. How are the characters here? Do they treat you well? Is Mickey, Mickey a nice guy? There are air compressors behind the super shooters, so a show about water is really driven by air. Would you guys feel more uh, comfortable over near a bright light? Yes, sir, that's a mighty big fountain and more liquid than a 7-Eleven Big Gulp. But with all that water, where can we possibly go from here? Well, there is yet another place to get wet here at Epcot 94. The Living Seas is one of seven Future World pavilions where anybody can come to see a variety of ongoing research projects and get a glimpse into the future. Today, as we traverse the bottom of the Living Sea, we hear yet another terrible impersonation. We marvel at the wonderful creatures, beautiful in form, get me a croissant, delightful in their natural habitats. Hey, Scott, we need that igloo back. Yeah, that sounds great. Uh, listen, is it normal for a shark to have a knife and fork? The Living Seas at Epcot 94 is a 5.7 million gallon simulated coral reef environment. It's home to more than 80 fascinating species of sea life, almost every kind of fish you'd expect to find in the Caribbean. One of the many research projects performed at the Living Seas allows guests to watch dolphins learn how to communicate with humans. Oh, how are you? How are you? Uh, Conrad, what exactly is the goal of the Living Seas? Uh, well, Scott, basically our goal is to give the public a better understanding of the oceans and man's reliance on the oceans, uh, our past relationship with them, and the role the oceans will, may play in the future of mankind. Okay. How about the dolphins? Well, the Dolphin Keyboard Project, uh, something we're very excited about. This is based on uh, some successful work that's been done with pygmy chimpanzees. And uh, basically, the dolphins have access to an array of symbols. Each symbol represents a word. The dolphins activate these symbols by sticking their nose inside the tube that houses the symbols. This breaks an optical sensor. The uh, symbol is lit up, and the word that that symbol represents is spoken in English to an underwater speaker. Go. Our hope is to understand how the dolphins monitor their environment, how they manipulate the behavior of other dolphins, and just generally get an idea of, of uh, how dolphins think. Well, that's, uh, that's very interesting, Conrad, but I was uh, talking about the Miami Dolphins, because, uh, you know, Marino's coming back next year, but uh, that was really interesting. Thanks for your time. All right, take care. The Living Seas, it's open year-round. Conrad, one more question for you. Uh, how do I get out of here? Conrad, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> it's not. Um, can you ask one of the biologists up there that is it normal when the sawfish goes by, I notice he's leaving little wood shavings as he goes by. So, while I work out my dilemma, let's see how some of the Walt Disney World employees work out a little dilemma we've planned for them.
Meet Horgy, a nice young fellow from Yensitklat, a small country near Bavaria. He's decided to spend a day touring the lovely Disney MGM Studios. But before he can, he needs a little help from our unsuspecting Walt Disney World employees. Not a problem for our fine, hard-working friends? <laughs> well, kinda. You'll see from our cleverly hidden cameras, this homemade pamphlet, and our hidden microphone popcorn box that Horgy doesn't speak much English. In fact, Horgy doesn't speak much of anything. Let's see what these Walt Disney World employees will do when we throw them a bit of a curveball. Cool. Take picture. Spy yeah. uh, picture. Yes. So, uh, Mr. Kong, is it uh, watermelon shoes? Uh, shoes. Is it watermelon shoes? Is it Mr. Kong? In? Oh, Kong? I, I don't know where you buy them. I know what you're talking you, about. You, you know what I'm talking about? Yeah, they, the... Yes. Yes? Uh-huh. Yes. I do not know where. Only gift shops. Uh, the Mickey Dog Dance? Right. Oh, oh okay. Yes. That, that, all that, that's in Magic Kingdom. Kingdom. Magic Kingdom, a Space Mountain. Space Mountain. Big Thunder Mountain. Space uh, Mountain. It's a small space roller coaster. Mountain? Roller coaster. They roll up? Yes. Roller. Do you speak French? No. What, what language do you speak? Yes, it's French. Yes, No, what's nice is yes, clad is Disney talk backwards. But let's see how some other Disney employees at the Disney MGM Studios try to help Orgy. What do you want to mail in shoes? You're talking flip flaps or? The flaps? He means the shoes over. The shoes? The shoes? The shoes? The shoes. The shoes. The shoes. Oh, you can't walk there, no. You're looking for the shoes? Do you want to mail in shoes? Uh huh. Uh, you. I don't know where one would purchase uh, something like that. French? French? What French? are you speaking? I'm speaking French. No, it's not. I speak French. Uh, do you... I'm not speaking French, I assure you. Uh, speak Italian or whatever you speak. French. 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 No. No. Wow. Mojatus? Joe. Joe, show me Joe. I will. Show me Joe. Let's see. Okay, it's, uh... Harpiskin. Da, da, da. Yuyuska. Harpiskin, da, da, da. Yuyuska. Tick, 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 tick. Well, they may not know what he's looking for, but let's see if our own actor Greg can offer some help. What, what specifically is he looking for, do you know? We haven't quite Watermelon figured that out. Shoes and what is it? Watermelon shoes and Mickey okay. bouncing a ball. He's no talking idea. about Mickey Mouse shoes, watermelon. He's trying to find a place to get sneakers. I've heard it. it's a tiny world, small world. He's talking about watermelon shoes. Even though we've pushed these Walt Disney World employees to the edge, you can see they've gone the extra mile to help. Now let's fill them in on our little secret. Yendis Clat is Disney talk backwards. And, and he's got something to say to you, I think. Thanks, thanks for your help. You're on uh, Walt Disney World Inside Out. There are hidden cameras. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. You're uh, unbelievable. Walt Disney World Inside Out. There are hidden cameras. One right there. I, there's a... And... No one even sticking this popcorn in my face. <laughs> Can you take your shoe back? Well, I floundered here for a moment. Here's something for you swimming pool fans. Uh, something with a twist. So grab your trunks. It's going to be a bumpy ride. Let's go! Two water theme parks. Seven pools of cool, refreshing fun. Sixteen water slides. Eight million gallons of swimmable water throughout Walt Disney World. Eight different ways to get wet. Boy, that is good. And that's straight from the dragon's mouth. 
Thank you. Oh, that's wonderful. Please hold the carnival wax. You know, it's good to be the host. Five. Fifty-one. Well, well, if it doesn't fit in your carry-on, it's not going to fit here on the monorail. In fact, here's more of Scott Harriet's rootin' tootin' highfalutin' top secret tips. It's going to be a fantastic summer here at Walt Disney World. June 1st brings Mickey Mania to the Magic Kingdom. It's thousands of zany, mouse-eared objects in a new madcap parade. On July 1st, Epcot 94 introduces Innoventions, where you'll see, touch, and explore all the amazing new things of tomorrow that will change your life forever. Epcot 94 presents a big band salute to Duke Ellington running from July through September. And don't forget, there are going to be two new Disney resorts open this summer, Disney's Wilderness Lodge and Disney's All-Star Sports Resorts. One final tip, leave the furniture at home, and please, no Naga hide. Well, that's our show and our look at the wonderfully wet ways to enjoy Walt Disney World. Until next time, remember the old saying, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't take it to the prom. Bye-bye now.